is my daddy's fiction. I'm Pooh, Classic Radio, like you always wished it could be. 101.1 FM, Eager. 101.1 FM is owned and operated by the Independent Foundation Trust as a non-profit community service. This is the Voice of Freedom. Freedom Radio Network. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a few minutes, we're going to have the medal report from uh, Gene Miller. Uh, I don't know how the weather is in the rest of the world, but here we're having our annual summer monsoon, which means that uh, it's raining and it's nice and cool up here in the mountains of Arizona. Yeah. I couldn't figure out why the headset volume was so low. Then I looked over, the master volume on the console was low. So you should be able to hear me just a little bit better now. And uh, anyway, it's uh, it's marvelous. <laughs> Everything is green and growing, and, and the temperature is just perfect. And I don't know, you know how long the rain is going to last, but... Uh, Every summer in this part of Arizona, we have what are called the monsoons. The hot, moist air from the Gulf of Baja comes up uh, into Arizona, and it meets the uh, cold, dry air of the mountains, and down it comes. And uh, traditionally, we're supposed to get most of our water supply from the monsoons in the summer, and, of course, the heavy snowfall in the White Mountains in the winter. So if one or the other is lacking, then uh, we don't have such good crops and we don't have uh, high water tables and things like that. Although we are sitting on one of the largest aquifers in the United States. Hello, Gene. Hello. How are you? Good. What do we have for a metal report today? Well, this morning or today, gold closed at 329.50. It was up three dollars and ten cents today. Silver was up five cents to close at four dollars and thirty-three cents. Platinum was closed at 428.85, and the Dow closed at 8,121.11, up seven. 
uh, about seven and two thirds. It was kind of one of these days in the Dow that it was all over the place. It was high as almost eighty two hundred and and as low as about eighty one ten. And so it's been one of those kind of seesawing hip up and down uh, roller coaster rides in the stock market, which is kind of what uh, if you've got a chance, uh, those that are listening tonight to get yourself a uh, copy of Money Magazine or read you a couple quotes, one from Money Magazine, one from Reuters. Uh, the, this is the August issue for Money Magazine, and the cover it says, don't just sit there, sell stocks now. Uh, risks are rising. It says in the, in the beginning of the article, uh, risks are rising fast for stock investors when the Dow drops 192 points one day and rises 154 points the next day and skips 70 points the day after that. The stock market is sending you a clear signal. Risks are rising and it's time to sell some stocks. At today's prices, stocks are overvalued by 15 to 20 percent. Now, with that in mind... <laughs> They're being a little bit on the ridiculously conservative side there. conservative side on that. Well, and you got to understand, Money Magazine is a, is a magazine all, all predicated to uh, people buying stocks and mutual funds. That's all that they, they generally is, uh, advise people to do. So it's real unusual to even see them telling people to take this position in selling stocks. Highly unusual. In fact, in 1994... When the stock market was kind of cooling down, and it looked like it may go into a you know a corrective phase, they were gung ho and telling people to buy stock. And so they're very much a pro stock type of a magazine. But here they're telling people that uh, they're very nervous about the stock market. Now here's something you may find interesting. Uh, in today's issue uh, on the newsstand today, Monday's Time magazine said. President Clinton's working group on financial markets, chaired by Secretary uh, Treasury Secretary Robert Rubin, has been working on contingency plans to maintain orderly markets in case of a big sell-off. According to Time, the Financial Policy Panel is concerned about the potential for outflow to funds which have become swollen with deposits this decade. So I guess the point is if the government is concerned and they're putting together contingency plans for some sort of a market collapse, which they very well may be the ones that are engineering it in the first place, gosh, uh, makes me kind of wonder what we should be doing. Yeah, especially, you know, why would they be saying that they already have contingency plans? The first uh, paragraph in the uh, FEMA laws and the emergency executive orders uh, are, are not, are, have nothing to do with atomic attack or invasion of the United States. It's in case of economic collapse, are the exact words, as a matter of fact. And allowing them to have complete and total carte blanche when that does take place. Yeah, they've been preparing for this for many years. They know it's going to happen. Their socialist New World Order cannot have a middle class. Socialism will not allow it. The only way to eliminate the middle class in one fell swoop and make it look like some big, ridiculous accident is to have an a, a, a tremendous economic catastrophe, and that's exactly what's on the horizon. Well, and look where the middle class have moved to this last decade. You know, before the stock market was pretty much a market for the, you know, for the rich and the privileged, the, you know, for the elite type of, you know, if you want to call them that in society or whatever. And the middle class person pretty much was content to leave their money in CDs and, and, and more traditional conservative type of investments. But now you got the vast majority of them have moved their money out of those portfolios and into the stock market, whether it's through mutual funds, whether it's through their company 401k, but they are vastly into the stock market. In fact, 80% of the people in the stock market right now have never experienced uh, any type of correction. That tells me we have all this massive group of people that have come in here that haven't got a clue as to what's really going on. Sure, but you know, I predicted this years ago that they would suck the average person, the middle class family, into the stock market, and when it came time to institute their socialism, uh, they would simply pull the plug. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, 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 and uh, what was it, last year they passed legislation that allows what funds that are in the Social Security, which is kind of a 
kind of a joke, but... Uh, there is no Social Security trust fund, never was. Uh, but what, what they said now is, you know, you and I realized that, but they told everybody, well, now we're going to put what money is in there, and we're going to allow it to be used and, you know, put it in the, into the stock market. So when this thing does fall apart, they say, well, sorry, folks, it's gone now. Now they can yeah. give you a legitimate reason for it not being there. Well, it, it won't be legitimate, but <laughs> the average person w won't question it. Let's put it that way. Exactly. There is, let me say this again. There is no Social Security Trust Fund, never has been. All the trusts administered by the Treasury Department of the United States government are listed in the United States Code, and anybody can look it up. And there is no Social Security Trust Fund, never has been. It is not an insurance policy. There is no fund. It is a tax. The law clearly states that, and every penny goes into the general fund, and Congress and the government have been using it for anything they've wanted to use it for for all these years. Yeah, exactly. Period. End of subject. What's next? <laughs> well, uh, that's about it. What's going on with the markets? I think that you're going to see. Uh, uh, my my gut feeling with the with the precious metals market is that instead of seeing huge ten, twenty, thirty dollar jumps in the market, uh, I think that you're going to see this thing just kind of slowly creep its way back up now. And before you know it, it's going to be back up there and a lot more expensive than it is now. Uh, but do keep an eye on it here. Um, uh, we've got some specials running right now, uh, affordable to everybody out there. That's why we did this, uh, so that everybody that's listening can start to do something in buying some precious metals, having something, having their own type of contingency plan. If the government thinks it's uh, prudent to have a contingency plan, man, I tell you what, we should have it even more so because if they're the ones jerking, our, or jerking the chain and pulling the, pulling the rug out from underneath us, we better have our own contingency plan and the only thing that's going to survive is gold and silver. So that's why we've been designing these portfolios. There, there, there's not a lot of, in fact, we haven't put any type of exotic type coins or anything in there. We're just putting in bare bones, survival type stuff. I think this last one we put together was a roll of uh, junk quarters for $40, uh, two rolls, uh, I believe it was, of junk dimes uh, for $40, or a uh, MS64 Morgan Silver Dollar certified nice piece. You'll really like it uh, for I think it was forty five dollars. Uh, you can have one or one, two or three or all three of them if you like. Yeah, and they're they're really uh, they're the good deal. The hundred ninety percent silver dimes at forty dollars is just about right at the price of silver. Yeah, and especially with now that silver has uh, jumped up uh, the last couple of days here. Uh, you folks, you need to jump on it because it, 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 as silver is going up, it's becoming a better and better and better deal. So, oh, yeah. Uh, our number, as you know, is 1-800-295-2432. 1-800-295-2432. We'll also, if you're interested, get you out a free information pack and just kind of get you educated in this market if that is something that you need to have. Now, folks, listen to me very carefully. We're not telling you these things to scare you or make you purchase anything from Southwest International Trading. Uh, long before I ever had a sponsor that uh, that was uh, dealing in precious metals uh, years ago, I was telling you this. I'm still telling you this. I told you this between the time uh, that uh, uh, Swiss America Trading uh, dropped the program and Southwest International Trading picked it up when we didn't have any sponsor at all and I'm going to continue to tell you this uh, until it happens and it's going to happen ladies and gentlemen there's going to be an economic collapse the world government is going to be socialist they've made no secret of this if you understand the tenets of socialism there can be no middle class socialism is uh, trying, or at least they say, they want to eliminate class warfare, which means eliminate the classes, the different economic classes of people. Um, and to do that, you can only have one class, and that's a poor class because there's a redistribution of wealth. They must eliminate the middle class. The only way to do that, if you have any kind of brain power and thinking ability at all, is to cause an economic collapse, blame it on, on the market or, or something, and have everybody think, well, you know, they just got caught with their pants down and everything just go down the tubes. This recent dip in the price of gold and silver 
has caused a lot of people who were not thinking straight to sell a lot of their gold and silver. And remember, I've always advised you that no matter what price you buy precious metals at, hang on to it. Ignore the market. Ignore the price. Don't sell it for any reason whatsoever, unless you just absolutely have a family emergency where, there's, where it's a life or death situation that you've got to come up with, with something. And then the best way to get a deal on that is just trade it. <laughs> Use it for your bargaining chip in your hospital operation or your medical emergency or whatever it happens to be, you'll get a better deal. Now, listen to me, folks. When this economic collapse occurs, the price of gold and silver will begin to rise. When that happens, these people who are engineering this will dump tons of gold and silver that they've been holding in reserve in vaults around the world on the market. It will cause the price of gold and silver to go down to almost nothing, and they're going to do this knowing that the fools of the world will be panic-stricken and will sell off their supplies of gold and silver and while it's at those low prices, they will then come in and buy it all up, all of theirs and all of yours and everybody's, and you will be left with no bargaining chips uh, to exist in a world that's going to just become hell on earth for a while until order can be restored. So don't ever, don't ever fail to set aside some of your assets in order to acquire gold and silver coin or precious metals in some form that can be used to save you and your family in some future economic collapse. And no matter what the market does, no matter what anybody says, turn your back on it, don't pay any attention to it, don't ever sell it, period. There will come a day when you will thank your lucky stars that you listened to this advice. Absolutely. It's, you know, and... and uh you know, make yourself that plan and then don't vary from it one way or the other. Because this financial scenario is like a big chessboard. And they have been planning things many, many years in advance to get you to this point. And they want you to make that one last move, which puts you in the checkmate, and boom, you're dead. Once you're in checkmate, you can't move one way or the other. And, and so I believe that this is whole, if you look back in history and kind of look at this thing from standing from the outside looking in, you can see how this has been orchestrated to get people to a point where once they make their move and you make yours, boom, you set yourself up. And so, like like Bill said, they are trying to discourage people. I mean, it's just uh, unbelievable the people that have discouraged it, that, you know, have bought gold in the past and the guys it's been going on for so and so. I don't know if I want to hang on to this anymore. And yet that's the, that's the point where you need to hang on to it the most. That's right. Remember, I've always told you folks, that when you buy this stuff, unless you really are into numismatics and, and uh, you really understand numismatics and you understand the gold and silver markets and, and you're, you're a, a real investor and you know what you're doing, when you buy gold and silver, it should be to protect your assets and you should sit on it and never do anything with it, period. Remember, during economic collapse, gold and silver goes through the roof. And, but that's not what we're counting on either. We don't want you to get rich. We want you to be able to survive and not be poor, dependent upon the handout of Big Brother government or anybody else. Or, what's even worse, maybe reduced to such abject poverty that you might have to turn into a criminal and get yourself killed in the process. Yeah. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. The number, once again, folks, is 1-800-295-2432, Southwest International Trading. 1-800-295-2432. I remember just, you know, it seems like yesterday the stock market was, the Dow Jones was at 3,000, and they were talking about what a, what a tremendous record that was to have hit 3,000. Now it's 5,000 points higher. Remember, each point represents $1, but you don't see any any stocks on the stock exchange selling for $8,000. You don't see any company whose stock or whose business represents that much of an increase uh, at, at any time. You know, this is, this is a, a totally orchestrated phenomenon, and it's been orchestrated for a reason. And when they get ready to pull that plug, 
Um, I feel so sorry for the people who have put everything that they have into the stock market because they got greedy and they, they see all these uh, dollar signs in their eyes and they think they're just going to latch on to this uh, freight train and make a million dollars. It's not true, folks. It's going to come tumbling down. And when it does, I hope you're not one of the ones who are going to be hurt because there are going to be some people in this country who are just going to be completely devastated. And they're, they're bad enough off as it is. You know, so many, uh, almost everybody, in fact, everybody is up to debt to their eyebrows. If they sold everything they own, they'd still be in the hole. So uh, don't let yourself get in that situation. Call Southwest International Trading today, 1-800-295-2432. Take advantage of these specials. That's how you can get your hands on some real money. Gene will work with you. If you have some other thoughts in mind, uh, that's Gene's business. He deals in this. And uh, he, you know, every time you spend a dollar with Southwest International Trading, you're helping to fund the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network in the hour of the time. That's 1-800-295-2432. Okay, folks, I've had so many calls and letters from people wanting to know why I've never played the audio tapes from uh, my speaking event in Porterville. And there really hasn't been any reason, except I've been busy doing other things and, and imparting other information to you. Uh, recently, I put the tapes in and listened to them, and they're, they're really good. Uh, some of the best stuff I've ever done. So uh, I'm going to start that today, and we'll just go through maybe uh, three or four hours of it this week. And that's what we'll do for the rest of this week. And you guys can stop calling me and writing me letters wanting to hear the tapes from Porterville. And I'll be announcing later this week if you want to purchase the whole set. They will be available for you to do that. So here it is, William Cooper in Porterville, California, and I believe it was right toward the end of winter, sort of the beginning of spring. And uh, when we left Arizona, it was snowing. So this is really nice weather here. Uh, not that Arizona weather is not nice weather, but uh, toward the end of winter, you're not so fond of snow as you are toward the beginning of winter and around Christmas time. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things today. If you want to audio tape, that's fine. No videotaping allowed, period, under any circumstances. I suggest that you all take notes because the truth is, is that no matter how smart we think we are, and me included, we usually retain only about 10% of anything that we hear. This is going to be intensive for about six hours. I'm going to bombard you with information. So if you don't take notes, when you leave here, you're going to say, what did he say about that? And uh, it, 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 the purpose of this is to leave you with something. I want you to go out of here with a, a good understanding of the information that I'm going to cover. My purpose is not to change your religion. My purpose is not to uh, make you believe everything that I say. On the contrary, I'm the only one in the world that will tell you, listen to everyone, read everything, believe absolutely nobody, including me, including your mother, including your pastor, your preacher, your priest, your Uncle Bob and anybody else that you can think of unless you can prove it in your own research. And research it doesn't mean getting a book off the library shelf and reading it and saying, well, he said it, so it must be true. Because I wrote a book, you see. And I'm telling you, don't believe me unless in your own research you can prove what it is that I'm telling you. Because this is the age of deception. And if you don't believe that, you might as well go home right now because you're in the wrong place. This is the age of deception, and everybody today is living in a fantasy world, and they're promoting agendas that they don't understand, because somebody has told them that it's the right thing to do, and they generally believe it. Most people go to the church that they go to simply because their parents did, and for no other reason. Most people who are Democrats are Democrats because their parents were. Are they Republicans because their parents were? If you ask them, what is a Republican, they couldn't tell you in a hundred million years. They don't know. They vote that way because that's comfortable for them because that's what they grew up with. Most of us do what we do because we grew up in it. So there is an awful lot about this environment around you shapes who and what you are. It's the truth. I had a... Uh, woman at the post office where we lived the other day say, I listen to your radio station every day. It's wonderful. 
But when Bill's show comes on, I turn it off because I don't want to be brainwashed. What is she admitting to? She's admitting that she's already been brainwashed because she is unwilling to listen to opposing viewpoints. That's the biggest number one sign of brainwashing that there is. It didn't matter that it was my show. It's any show. Any opposing viewpoint. Anything that opposes the status quo, if you won't listen to it, you're already brainwashed. You've closed your mind and you are at the mercy of whatever manipulation they want to throw your way because you've already determined that they're telling you the truth no matter what. You don't investigate. You have accepted blindly. That's the most dangerous thing that can happen to anyone. The moment that you say, this guy right here, I like him. I like what he says. He's right. I'm going to listen to him. And anybody that says anything different to him is wrong. You just totally destroyed yourself. Because the truth is, he's a human being. I'm a human being. This young lady is a human being. Bill Clinton is a human being. Okay? When you mistake, when you mistake people for righteousness, or when you mistake people for the message, or when you mistake people for government, or when you mistake people for religion, you're making a big mistake. Because people, for the most part, are a big mistake. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to tell you? We are subject to temptations. We are subject to our own carnal desires, lusts, and, and uh, um, well, I could probably go through a list of about 500 things that can make an average, normal, good-thinking, good-doing person for most of the time at some point in their life do something that's absolutely terrible. Most of us are here and not in jail because most of us, when we did whatever it was that was so terrible in our life already, and everybody here, without exception, has done something like that, we got away with it, didn't we? Okay. The concept that imperfect men can rule imperfect men is absolutely ludicrous. The concept that you can give someone power and they're not going to abuse that power is also ludicrous. It is wrong for us to ever get into that kind of thinking. And the more power you give someone, the more opportunity they have to abuse or misuse that power. And the easier it is to fall into temptation for them. Now, i got to tell most of you right now, I don't like Bill Clinton any more than you do, but it's wrong. It is absolutely wrong of us to judge Bill Clinton. What we can say is we don't want him as president. He shouldn't be running the government, but unless you walk in his shoes, unless you know what temptations he's fallen prey to, or what people have offered him to be and do what he is and what he does, being imperfect humans ourselves, it's not right to do that. And if you're a Christian, you know, judge not lest ye be judged, right? So it's wrong for us to do that. It's okay to call him a communist because he is. Okay? It's okay to tell the truth. Truth is what I'm all about. And believe me, sometimes I get caught in the deception just like everybody else, but it's not as easy to catch me in the deception as it is to catch most of you. Because I've been caught too many times, and I learn from my mistakes. And I spend 99% of my time searching out the truth where none of you have ever looked. Some of you may have looked in some of the areas and some of the things that I've looked in, but I can guarantee you there's nobody in this room who has looked where I've looked as long as I have looked as diligently as I have done it. Okay? Now, 
what I'm going to try to do today is sort of give you some of what I've learned. And you can take it for whatever you think it's worth. I hope that you will take it out of here and use it to search for your own truth. Truth is not always cut and dried. It's not always black and white. You can't get into the concept that, hey, this is right and that is wrong and there is no in-between because that's not true. There are all kinds of in-between all the time. And truth is elusive, folks. I have to tell you this. It's elusive at best and it's hard to find. And the moment you think you know it all, you have lost yourself again. It's one of the major things that I've discovered in my life is by the time we reach an age where we understand we need to learn something that we don't really know at all, it's usually in the late 30s or sometime in the 40s. If you've discovered that earlier than that, you are the exception, you are not the norm. Because it isn't true that during the first years of our life, we're just discovering the world around us. We're subject to... Um, High school teachers, principals, the community at large. And isn't it true that during those years we're basically trying to serve some sense of discover who we are and what the world is about and not really what the truth is. Sort of fit our way into it whether we think we belong or not. And isn't it true that during those years, the major preoccupation with most people is to be liked by everybody else? Isn't that what most of us spend most of our time in high school doing, trying to be liked by everybody else? So that instead of looking for the truth or doing the right thing, we do what we think the other children around us would like for us to do, so that they will like us. Now, it's not bad to admit that, because it's a human thing. And every person in their younger years goes through that. Then we get into our later teens and our early 20s, and, and what is the major preoccupation on everybody's mind? Sex, right? Anybody says no, I'll call them a liar to their face. It's sex. Whether you'll admit it or not, it's the truth. And because to be involved in that activity or to have someone, whether you're involved in actually having sex or not, but the sexuality of being with someone else, you have to have a job. And you have to have a car. And you have to be able to talk the talk and walk the walk, right? So that takes up our life. And then sometime, usually in the later 20s, some guy sets out to get a girl and she traps him. <laughs> right? So they get married. Some people don't. And that's to their great credit because personally, folks, after having lived my life, and being honest with myself, any woman who marries a man before he's the age of 36 is a fool. Because most men aren't ready for that. They're not mature enough. And you're just asking for trouble. But people have done it and succeeded. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. <laughs> But that's what in, we're all wrapped up in that stuff. And none of it really means anything. Because it's all going to happen to you anyway. If you are just doing the right thing, you're going to attract the right people. And if you're a man, the right woman's going to come along. And if you're a, a woman, the right guy's going to come along. If you're involved in doing right things. But the problem is, we try to make it happen. And that's where we get in trouble. And we ignore all the most important things that we should be involved in in our life that really matter because this, these other things are just natural things that are going to happen you can't make somebody like you in high school whatever in the world made us think that, that we could make people like us if we just go along and do what we're supposed to do and just be ourselves people are going to like us but we think we have to 
make it happen. Or we think if we do this or we do that, Susie's going to like us more and uh, we're going to have the hot date we've always dreamed about. Well, you might, but as soon as Susie finds out that it's all phony, it's all going to fall apart anyway, right? Okay. So, by the time we're in our late 30s, or sometime in our 40s, is usually when we begin to discover what's really important in life. Now, if you don't believe that, look around in this room and look the age of everybody in here. See, if I was lying, this room would be full of 16-year-olds and 20-year-olds and 25-years-old, but it's not, is it? What's the average age of everybody in here? Late 30s and 40s, right? So I'm telling you the truth, aren't I? By the time we reach that stage, if we make a concerted effort to learn everything that we need to know and begin to really do the right thing, we don't have enough time left. That's why I devote every single moment that I have in my life to this. Because there just isn't enough time. And even if I do the very best job that I can possibly do, I can't complete the task that I need to, to complete before I'm going to pass on into another reality. And so it's so important to me that you get something from me and take it and continue with what I'm doing. The whole nation needs to be doing this. Now, I'm going to talk about this country and what it's all about. Some of you are going to disagree with me. And during this talk today and tomorrow, I'm going to make some of you angry. And I want you to understand this. If what I'm telling you up here is not true, it's not going to bother you. You're a rapist! Did that bother anybody in here? Anybody get bothered by that? No. You know why? Because there's no rapists in here. If I said, you're a rapist, and somebody got up and started yelling at me and ran out the door, you'd know I hit somebody, wouldn't you? Okay. On my radio show, I use the term sheeple a lot. I can always tell when I hit the targets before I get the letters. How dare you call me a sheeple? <laughs> that person wouldn't have wrote that letter if that person wasn't a sheeple. Because they would have known I wasn't talking about them. Right? Only the person that the arrow hits gets angry. So, and the reason I'm telling you this is if you find what I'm talking about disturbing, I'm hitting you with some truth that is bothering you. That's really bothering you and you need to look at it really closely. Because it wouldn't be bothering you if it wasn't true. If it wasn't pinging on you personally with something that you know inside of you is not right, it's not going to upset you. And that's the truth. Okay. <laughs> There are a lot of people who are extremely critical of my radio broadcast because they say I spend too much time on symbology and history and the mystery religions and all of these things that they write me letters and say, it doesn't, I, I don't care about that. It doesn't mean anything. Why don't you get into some nitty gritty? Well, they don't understand that is the nitty gritty. He who does not study and understand history is doomed to repeat it. And the same play has been being performed throughout the history of the world by what we call the builders, the controllers, the puppet masters, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to start right at the beginning and tell you exactly who they are and how to identify them. Okay? Because they really are puppet masters. They really are controllers. They really are builders, but they're not engaged in building buildings. They're engaged in building people. They're building what they call the perfect race. They're perfecting humanity in order to control nature. They're building 
the utopian world that they perceive that we need. Who's we? We who? You didn't ask me about this. You know? And that's the problem with these guys. They have placed themselves in, a, in an elitist attitude to tell the rest of us what we need. And the truth is, we don't need them to do that. Okay? They haven't got the right to do that. They think they do, because they think we're just a bunch of stupid cattle. And i got to tell you, for the most part, most people prove them right all the time. Not intentionally, but because the knowledge, the truth has been withheld from the people. And that's how they manipulate people, is by withholding the truth and controlling them with the lies. Okay? Now, first got to start off here. i got to ask you a question. What's the most important thing about this country that you can think of? And I want to see some hands and hear some answers. This is a participation sport when you come in here with me. Okay? Yes, sir? Recognition of God-given rights. Recognition of God-given rights. Okay. Individual liberty. Individual liberty. Freedom. Freedom. No king but King Jesus. No king but King Jesus. Sound money. Sound money. Okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. Which one of those, because somebody already gave the right answer, which one of those do you think is the right answer? Everybody all at once. Freedom. 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 Why? Because none of the rest of them would exist without it. You couldn't have any of the rest of them without the freedom to do it. You give somebody the power to say you can't have one king but King Jesus, and you're not going to have King Jesus, you're not going to have Christianity, you're not going to have a church. In fact, if they catch you saying the word Jesus, they'll have to chop your head off and throw your body to the lions. Isn't that correct? Okay. The greatest thing about this country, whether you agree with me or not, it's the absolute truth. If you take this away from any person or any group of people, you have no country freedom. You have no religion. You have no sound money. You don't have any of it. You're subject to the control of the people who have taken your freedom away and who are now subjecting you to their will because that's what lack of freedom is. Being subject. You know what subject means? To someone else's will. Freedom means you're subject to your own will. As long as what? As long as you take responsibility for your actions and you never hurt the person or property of any other human being. Period. If you do, you put yourself at war with someone else. Is that freedom? No. Then you're taking someone else's freedom away. You have become the bad guy when you do that. How many of you have heard of Dave Emery? Talk show host. KGO, San Francisco. Anybody? The other day he called me that famous fascist. Do I sound like a fascist? <laughs> no. But you see, that's part of the manipulation. Because has a one -track mind. Pardon? He has a one -track mind. No, he has an agenda, so is what he has. <laughs> yeah. He's not really thinking, he's fulfilling an agenda. He has an agenda, he's a socialist. He doesn't want people to listen to me who tell you that freedom is the most important thing in the world because socialism can't have people walking around saying like things like that. Because socialism doesn't give you freedom. They want you to think it does. Aren't they trying to bombard you with the delusion that liberals are for freedom? Liberals are for socialism. Liberals started out being for freedom when there wasn't any. Being for freedom was liberal. Being conservative was for the power of the king. Remember? All of our founding fathers were liberals. Believe it. They were also traitors. So if somebody calls me a, a traitor because uh, I'm supposedly against the government, it doesn't bother me. I'm in damn good company. But you see, I'm not a traitor. 
Because what is the government? We are not the government. No, we're not even supposed to be. What is the government? The government is a contract signed by the Founding Fathers, which is called the Constitution for the United States of America. That is the government. That says what the government can do, what the government cannot do, when it can do it, when it cannot do it, where it can do it, where it cannot do it. Are you parties to that contract? Huh? Nope. No, you're not. How can you be party to a contract you didn't sign? You can't be. So it's a contract entered into between the signatories representing the first 13 colonies in order to establish a union of independent sovereign states for their mutual benefit and protection. Correct? Am I right? Okay. Only those who signed it and those whom they legally and lawfully represented are really bound to it. Is that correct? No. <laughs> now, don't get into all this posterity stuff, because posterity is only bound to it if they want to be. How do you get bound to it? You're in a territory which wants to become a state, and by vote you agree to become bound to it and are accepted as a state of the union. You understand that? Okay. Why? Because you elected representatives to act in your behalf. Is that correct? Okay. Is that a democracy? No. Is this a democratic country? No. Was it ever meant to be? No. Never. So why do we hear all this talk about democracy all the time? It's the agenda to brainwash the American populace into accepting democracy, which is what? The first step into socialism. Why? No, because in our human failings and in our temptations, if it's one man, one vote, the majority is going to vote themselves everything, right? And if you vote yourself everything, what is that? The state owes me a job. We're going to vote that the state has to give us all a job. We're going to vote that the state is responsible for making sure that I have X number of dollars a year, so we're going to vote that there's going to be a minimum income for everybody in the country. That's socialism. Lenin, V.I. Lenin, you all know who he is? The man who founded the Soviet Union? V.I. Lenin said, democracy is indispensable to socialism. You can take a free people, Make them into a democracy from whatever they were before, and they will vote themselves into slavery every single time because they are weak. They want the benefits. They want the check from the government. They want the job from the government. They want a car from the government. They want medical care from the government. They want everything from the government. What's the fallacy in that? The government doesn't have anything to give you unless they first take it away from you. Right? Now, for somebody who works and is productive, they don't like that. That's not good, is it? Somebody, however, who is a weak victim, <coughs> that's great, isn't it? Because they don't have to do anything anymore, do they? They can just sit back and be provided for. Have you noticed all across the country right now, they are creating victim classes of people? Why do you think that is? Because victims need care. Once you create a victim that needs care, you have another vote for socialism, don't you? Most of it is a scam. When I grew up, as a boy, I lived all over the world. 
I remember one period of time when I was in junior high. That's seventh and eighth grade. I lived in Midwest City, which is right outside of Oklahoma City. I went to Midwest City Monroney Junior High School, which had just been built. We were the first students in that school. Nobody locked their doors. I never knew a girl that got pregnant. Never, ever, not once. Never knew anybody who was divorced. Never knew anybody whose home was robbed. I had my bicycle tire cut one time by a kid who didn't like me. <laughs> Big deal. You know, what's that? Three bucks for a new tire. And of course, I bloodied his nose. <laughs> We both got whipped by our parents. Him for slitting my bicycle tire, me for bloodying his nose. I didn't care. He didn't care either. We lived in a different world than we live in today. Everybody earned a living. Everybody who wanted to work had a job. I don't care who it was. And the only thing that could hold them back would be the lack of an education, which was available to everybody, except in some extreme rural areas of this country where there really was poverty, lack of education, and inability to get good work because they didn't have that education. Now you see people coming in this country complaining about these things that have no legitimate complaint. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not pinging on immigrants. Because if I lived in a place that was so terrible I couldn't support my family or put a roof over my head or even find a toilet to go to the bathroom, I would be coming across this border just as quick as they are. You can't fault them for that. It's illegal. You can fault the government for allowing it to happen because it's illegal, it's unlawful. And they're always talking about we've got to follow the law. Truth is, we only have to follow the law that they think is okay. Why do they want these people coming across our borders? Because these people are helpless. They're without money, they're without a home, they're without a job. What are they? Victims. What do victims bring? Give them the vote and you're going to have socialism. That's why they don't try to stem the flood of immigration. It furthers the agenda of socialism. I feel sorry for those people. They're being used. And their only thought is to find a good place where they can have a good life for themselves and their children. They're being used and abused. And they all become good little Democrats. They all vote socialist. And they all want their handouts from under Uncle Sam. There are some who came into this country many years ago of many different nationalities who have learned the American way. Our good Americans are not immigrants. They are Americans. And they've established and have a sound place in this country. They're part of it. But they're being used. They can't speak the language. Because they can't speak the language, it's hard to find a job. When they find a job, it's not at the pay that they would like to have. So they look to the government to solve their problems. Does everybody understand what I'm telling you? You've often wondered, why is it that they don't do anything about this flood of immigrants coming across the border? And I'm not talking about just Hispanics from Mexico, Central and South America. I'm talking about from all over the world. They come here for a better life, not realizing that in coming here and being manipulated and used as they are, they're going to destroy all of their chances for ever having the American dream. They're going to help bring about socialism, which will put them back into slavery again. And that's got to stop. You have to understand the agenda, you have to understand who's bringing it about and why before you can see the manipulations and how people are being used and manipulated to bring it about. How many of you believe that this is a Christian government? How many of you believe that it was founded as a Christian government? I hate to tell you this, but you're wrong. 
this country was built by Christians because that's the majority of the people who originally came here. And a lot of the things that they believed in is reflected in our laws and in our traditions and in our government. But the government was never meant to be Christian. Have you ever seen the government in church? Have you? Does the government go to church? No. Does the government pray? No. What is the government? It's the Constitution for the United States of America, the Bill of Rights, and the amendments lawfully made thereto. You see, you're mistaking people for the government. The founders of this country, by and large, were Christian. Many of them weren't Christian, but pretended to be, were deists, and you can find that in their writings. Many of them were members of the secret societies. How many of you believe Thomas Jefferson was a Christian? I'm not afraid. I believe that until I read the truth about Thomas Jefferson and studied his life. Thomas Jefferson hated Christianity. Thomas Jefferson tore up the Bible. Thomas Jefferson wrote his own Bible because he said the God of the universe could not possibly be that terrible God represented in the King James Version of the Bible. Don't be afraid to raise your hand in here, folks. Nothing that I'm going to say is intended as a personal slant or insult or attack upon anybody in here. But I need your cooperation in order for us all to learn. See, I wasn't afraid. I raised my hand. That's what I believed most of my life until I really studied Thomas Jefferson and found out what he really was. He was a deist. So was Benjamin Franklin. How many of you knew that Benjamin Franklin was the master of the Masonic Lodge in Philadelphia? How many of you knew that he was the master of the Lodge of Nine Muses in France? Have you ever studied the Lodge of Nine Muses? Boy, you better. How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin was in the colonies, he pretended to be a pious Christian, although he was not seen in church too much, pretended to be a pious Christian. However, he entered into a sexual relationship and a living arrangement with two different women and sired children by both of them, never married either one. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin went to France, he surrounded himself with prostitutes and drank champagne almost 24 hours a day and just reveled in orgies? How many of you knew that? You'd be surprised what some ugly old men are capable of. <laughs> See, these are things you don't know because you were taught something different and it makes you uncomfortable to hear what I'm telling you only for the reason that you've been taught something else and you've been reared with it and you've had accepted it. It's hard to let go of something that you have learned and accepted that is not true. You don't want to let go of it, because then you have to give up your comfort zone. How many of you know that George Washington was a Freemason? How many of you know if you're a Freemason, you cannot possibly in your wildest dreams be a Christian? And that's it, folks. We'll continue tomorrow where we left off. Good night, and God bless each and every single one of you. This is my daddy's sister, and I'm too. Classic radio, like you always wished it could be. 101.1 FM, eager. 101.1 FM is owned and operated by the Independent Foundation Trust as a non-profit community service. This is the Voice of Freedom.
appear to be having some uh, malfunctioning equipment here, folks. I hope you will excuse the uh, problems. You're listening to the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network. Be sure to tune in at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern for Michael Cottingham with Quest for Health. And uh, later, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern for the rerun of today's broadcast of the Hour of the Time with yours truly, William Cooper. And in between, don't forget, as we are bringing to you now, all of these most of the time, classic radio like you always wished it could be. Only the very best of the very best music of generations gone by. Now give your heart 